Hi, I'm Jamie Miller, Registered SQF Consultant at Kellerman Consulting, and you're watching the Risk Assessment video series. Kellerman Consulting releases weekly training videos and important tips and strategies to help companies keep up to date with the latest food safety regulations. In the last episode, we focused on the importance of leadership activities in risk assessment development and maintenance as part of the larger considerations in a facility. In this episode, we are going to look at risk assessments as part of a food safety program, including what government regulators are looking for and how to conduct annual reviews of completed risk assessments with the safety team. As part of this review, we will be looking at how risk assessments are used in FDA regulated facilities versus USDA regulated facilities, and here the use of risk assessments are quite different. For facilities manufacturing food packaging and are not under food regulations or oversight, risk assessments required by BRC, SQF, and FSSC 22000, covered in our GFSI video, would be the only potential risk assessments that apply to the facility. As a food safety or packaging plan is only required if you voluntarily participate in those certification schemes. For facilities that process meat or poultry products under FSIS inspection and operate HACCP programs, the frequency at which the inspector is on site determines how important performing risk assessments is in those facilities. The food safety or operations lead may discuss with FSIS about putting risk assessments in place for their operation. Regardless of what the FSIS inspector needs for regulatory purposes, the facility can always create a risk assessment to assist in the evaluation of their operations. The reason why FSIS is less likely to ask for or expect risk assessments other than in the hazard analysis is because in facilities with constant FSIS presence, the inspector has the right to walk into production as they deem it necessary and they can observe for themselves how risky or appropriate behaviors in production are. This is in contrast to FDA inspection, which does not occur constantly, and where the regulator needs a written record to understand how the facility has been operating in between their last and current regulatory inspection. This is the same issue that occurs during certification audits, where auditors only see a snapshot in time for the facility during the day or two that they are on site, and need those risk assessments to judge how things work during the course of the year. For FDA facilities operating under preventive controls plans that may or may not also include HACCP, risk assessments are going to be documents facilities should have prepared to show inspectors. When those risk assessments are prepared, it is the expectation of Kellerman Consulting that the facility should expect positive experiences in their inspections and should get good feedback on those risk assessments where they are accurate. To identify which aspects of operations may require a documented risk assessment, Focus should be placed on the required preventive controls under FSMA. Here, we are going to exclude the recall preventive control since those rarely have a risk assessment. In addition to the risk assessments performed for process preventive controls documented in the hazard analysis and suppliers as part of the supply chain preventive controls, a risk assessment addressing allergen controls in the facility and sanitation controls for cleaning should be written. For facilities that do not have allergens, or where there is less pressure for cleaning and sanitation to control serious food safety hazards, cleaning and sanitizers are not regularly used. A risk assessment may be written as low risk. The reasoning is that those practices are not performed. For facilities that do have allergens, and those where cleaning and sanitizing is performed regularly, the risk assessments should be written to determine the risk of allergen contamination for the allergen controls and the risk of improper cleaning and sanitizing for those controls. In both risk assessments resulting in a higher low level of risk, it is the monitoring activities records that may be used as documented evidence and justification for this assessed risk level. Other areas where risk assessments should be performed and documented for FDA facilities are the vulnerability assessment as part of the security plan, fraud prevention program, and environmental monitoring.
It is the responsibility of the food safety team to review all risk assessments associated with the food safety program at least annually as part of the overall assessment of the food safety system. In our previous episode, we talked about leadership review and we suggest that these remain separate reviews from the review conducted by the food safety team, unless leadership heads the food safety team in operations. The purpose of food safety team reviews is to determine if they are up to date for the food safety plan. An example of the requirement to update would be a metal detector being added or where equipment changes have been made. Additionally, Risk assessment reviews must include evidence that food was produced safely in accordance with those risk assessments. Nonconformance reports, GMP walkthroughs, customer complaints, and pre-shipment reviews can be proof in these reviews as well as any product testing or sensory evaluations performed on finished product. In our final episode of risk assessment series, we'll take a detailed look at the risk assessment requirements for each GFSI program and how those are reviewed as part of certification audits. To learn more, visit our website and you'll find a full library of food safety training videos and resources. Follow us on LinkedIn and click the bell to be notified as new resources are released each week.